Um, I want to talk to you uh, uh, and share with you a message. It's really the second part of what we began last week, talking about life being disrupted. And uh, when I was younger and I played video games, there was always a, a way to pause the game and then come back later and pick up where you left off and continue in that same game. I talked to my, my youngest son, he plays video games, and I call him and I say, I need you to help me with something. And he says, hold on, my game's not finished. And I say, well, just pause it. Just pause it and you can go back to the game later. But evidently, uh, the game that he's playing now, you can't just pause it and go back. And so I say, well, if you don't come in five minutes, there's gonna be a problem. And there have been times where I have to uh, shut off the television or shut off the game system or unplug and it stops the game and it actually creates a disruption for him. It doesn't allow him to go back to get in the game uh, that he was playing. You know, I think God uses circumstances in our lives, events and experiences that we face to disrupt our lives. Um, not to just interrupt them, but to create a disruption. And, and here's what I mean by that. I think those, those terms are similar, but they're, they're also different, I think, in the way that we use them and the way that I'm using them today. An interruption is momentary. It's, it's temporary. You go back to what you were doing before. A disruption really has a, an intent to create uh, some kind of, of change. That's what I think God wants to do, a, an intent to create a lasting change, to chart a new course, to accomplish his purposes, where we would say, okay, you can't go back to the way things used to be. A disruption. Last week, we talked about Moses in Exodus uh, chapter 3, and, and I'd encourage you to read his entire story. Go back to it again and read it for the first time. It's fascinating as you watch Moses go through this process, the processes in his life. And we saw last week that, that Moses was for a long time, for 40 years, he was uh, tending sheep. He was a shepherd. And then all of a sudden, this one day, he sees this strange sight in the distance, which is a bush that's on fire that's not being consumed. And he goes closer to it. And God, we see, was pulling him toward himself with this, this experience that he had never seen before, this strange sight. God was pulling him to himself and created this holy ground moment for him so that he could experience the presence of God, so that he could know God in, in a fresh way, so that God would, would, he would understand that God was the source of all things and that God was his holy creator. The purpose for this strange sight, this encounter, isn't so Moses will go back to leading sheep again. It's actually meant to be a disruption in his life to move him into God's purposes for his life. I don't know if you've been saying what I've been saying here the last week or so. I've been saying, can't everything just go back to normal? I'm, I'm tired of operating the way that we're operating in, in our life. Um, I was uh, at a store with my mask on and I'd been there uh, shopping, it was, it was Costco, and, and so I had this mask that my wife has made, they're great masks, they're, they're multiple layers, and uh, we'd been in there for like a half an hour, and I just came out of there, and I had to rip off that mask because it was like suffocating me, and I'm saying those words, can't we just go back to normal? But here's what I think, I think God comes close to our lives, calls us close to him, not just for it to be an interruption in our lives, but to be a disruption. He wants to use the circumstances in our lives to allow us not to go back to the way that we used to be living, the way that things used to be. So certainly uh, in our culture, what's happening, I want to go back to normal. But I would say we need to look at this moment in our lives and say, Lord, what are you doing? Don't let me go back to the way things used to be in my life. Think about it. When people in Scripture encountered God, when they, they encountered Jesus, so many times they didn't go back to their normal life. Think about when Jesus called these fishermen to come follow him. They actually dropped their nets and left, and he said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Think about the, the people that, that uh, Jesus healed, 
A blind man who, who has sight now. The blind become sighted. Lame begin to walk. Think about the, the woman who was caught in adultery. He says, man, I'm not going to, I don't condemn you anymore. And now I want you to leave from this place and not sin anymore. So change the way you're living. The Apostle Paul has this encounter with God, this encounter with Jesus, and he doesn't go back to way, the way things used to be. Moses, this is what this moment is for Moses. Moses, you're not going to lead sheep anymore. You're actually going to lead my people. So God allows, he uses these disruptions in our lives to change our lives. Not so that we have to go back to the way things were. He wants to move you into the way things are meant to be for your life, in your life, in your world, in his world. We saw God gets Moses' attention. He has this moment with him. And then in chapter 3, I just want to read again. We read it last week, but verses 7 to 10, the Lord said, after, he has this, uh, after Moses has this burning bush encounter, in verse 7, the Lord says, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And listen to what he says, and I'm, come, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into good and a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 9, he says, The cry of the Israelites has reached me. I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, listen to what he says to Moses. So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So this encounter that Moses has with the burning bush, this encounter, this holy ground moment with his God, isn't meant to be just an interruption in his life so that he goes back to the way that he was living. It's meant to be a disruption. It's meant to be, bring a change about in his life. It's actually meant to help him fulfill the purposes that God had for his life. If you remember the story of Moses, uh, if you've read it or, or seen maybe some of it on television at some point in your life, you may know that um, Moses was a Hebrew child. He was born as a Hebrew child, as an Israelite, and the Egyptians were killing all the Hebrew babies, and he was spared, and he was placed in a river, and an Egyptian princess finds him, and he's actually reared in the palace. And as he grows up, we read it in chapter 2, verse 11, one day Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When the Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. And, and the story goes on from there, and he becomes a, a shepherd in the desert for 40 years. Here's what I think God is doing with Moses. He's wanting to renew, to restore, and redeem what sent Moses to the desert in the first place. At first glance, we might think that Moses was sent into the desert because he killed a man. And in one respect, that's true. But a second look helps us discover that Moses was trying to do the right thing in the wrong way. He was a trying to accomplish God's purposes his own way. So here's what I, mean, I think we need to use what's happening in our lives as we look at around and say, Lord, this is, this is a major disruption in our culture. It's a major disruption in our world. It's a major disruption in our lives, my life, your life. Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what, what are you trying to accomplish? I don't want to go back to normal. Lord, don't, I think it should be our prayer. Lord, don't let me go back to the way things were in my relationship with you, in my walk with you. I want to fulfill and carry out your purposes for my life, whatever those might be. 
in this moment. Whatever's next for me, Lord, I want to. I think that's what we need to say. And, and so how do we not go back to normal? I, I think we need to, to certainly listen to the Lord's voice and what he might be saying to us. And I think we also need to inspect the pain points of our past. So Moses really felt the pain, the injustice of what was happening to his people. It was a good thing that he had in his heart and in his mind. He actually tried to accomplish it the wrong way. So I think you and I have to look at the things in our lives that might not be right. They might not be right. They might be, look, we might look at the things in our lives and say, what's broken? What, what are the circumstances that I see and that I feel that, that uh, are unjust? Are there things in, in my own life that aren't meeting God's intended purpose? And, and as we inspect those, as we inspect those, those areas of our lives, I think the Lord's going to speak to us and say, hey, this is where I want to disrupt. This is what I want to take you and, and allow it to not go back to normal. This is what I want to put back to right. The passion and the desire for good in the world that Moses desired, the things that were inside of his heart, God already understood those. God knew what was going on there. In fact, when he talks to Moses after in that burning bush experience, he says, Moses, I, I've seen it. I've heard what's happening, and, and I actually want to use you to accomplish that good, but I really want to do it in the way that I intend. So I think we've got to look backwards in our lives, look, look, inspect our lives to the pain points in the past and see and listen to the Lord to see how he might want to speak to us in that moment to say this needs to change whether that's in your life or whether it's in your family, whether that's in, in your neighborhood or the whole world, the whole world. I think the second thing we need to do, and, and if you continue to read the story of Moses, you, you discover this. I think we need to be boldly confident in God's power, boldly confident in God's power. Over those next couple chapters, you find Moses, he has a lot of excuses because God comes to him and says, Moses, I want to send you. And that very next verse, Moses says, well, who am I? Who am I? And Moses, you see uh, over those next chapters, Moses is trying to be confident in his own strength, in his own ability. He's trying to, to use his own understanding, think that he's going to have to accomplish God's purpose with his own eloquence. But God came to him and said, remember, God said, I'm doing the rescuing. I'm just using you. You know, I think most times God doesn't give us everything that we need in advance he gives us what we need when we take a step of faith. When I say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accomplish your purposes for my life. I'm going to accomplish your purposes in the world. And we take that step of faith. That's when God meets us with the resources that we need. Listen, you can't fit God into a box. You have to be confident in the power of God that he's going to equip you and use you to accomplish those things. We try, we try to understand everything about God. We try to, to figure him out. We try to, to explain everything about what's really unexplainable. You and I need to be confident. We don't want to go back to normal. We need to be confident in God's power that, that's at work in our lives and take that step of faith and watch him come through. He understands where we're at. He understands what we've been through. He understands the failures of the past. He understands what got us into maybe a desert place in some area of our lives. And then he wants to redeem and restore that. We just have to be confident in his power that he's going to do it and take that step of faith. And then I think third, we see this in Moses' life, is that, that ultimately he had a posture of availability. In, in his mind and in his heart, he was really saying, I, I'm available to make this happen. Now, he was still unsure he still didn't know every detail, but here's what I love what he did. He actually goes back to his father-in-law. He goes back to his father-in-law, Jethro, whose sheep he was, was tending. And uh, over in uh, chapter 4, verse 18, I, I love this. In verse 18, he says, Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. And Jethro said, Go, I wish you well. I love that. It's, it's really interesting to me because wouldn't you think this conversation would go a little bit different as he goes back to his father-in-law and he would say, I've just had this encounter with God. I saw, I met, I was on holy ground. I was in the presence of God and he's called me. I'm supposed to go back and lead the millions of Israelites 
out of Egypt and out of slavery and out of bondage and out of oppression. He's calling me to lead the revolution of this injustice that's happening. You think the conversation might go that way, but that's not how it goes. Moses goes to his father, hey, you know, you know, I got some family over in Egypt and, you know, I'd really like to check on how they're doing. Can I just like have a little bit of vacation? Can I have some time off and go see things how, are, how things are over in Egypt? And, and we read that Jethro says, sure, go ahead. And he goes on to pack a few bags and it really looks like he's just going for a short time and God reminds him there later, hey Moses, don't forget what I've, I've called you to do. You know, I think it, it's interesting because I think we see uh, Moses' humanity in those verses. I think he's a lot like us, a lot like me. You know, God says, hey, I want you to deal with this. I, I want this to meet my intended purposes for your life. And I think sometimes we're a little, little slow at getting moving, but I still see in Moses that, that availability. He didn't do it perfect there. He didn't come back and say, the Lord is going to use me. He said, listen, I need to go down to Egypt. And as you may know the rest of the story, God uses Moses powerfully to lead the Israelites uh, out of Egypt. Listen, I think we need to take this moment of disruption and, and not just this one that we're in right now, but man, if, if we're down the road five years, 10 years, we need to take the disruptions that happen in our lives and we need to say, Lord, you know, what, what are you doing? I don't want, after this is over, I don't want to go back to the way things were. I don't want to go back to normal. Listen, God needs you to fulfill the purposes in your life for your family. He needs you to fulfill those for uh, your, your spouse. He needs you to fulfill those for uh, the generation that you're in. Your generation needs you. Your world needs you. Not to go back to normal, but to follow God's purpose for your life. Let's not go back to normal. Let's say, Lord, I'm going to see what you're doing, and I'm going to be available. I'm going to trust and be confident, boldly confident in your power. And I'm going to step into the things that you have planned for me. I'm not going to let any failures of the past hold me back. I'm not going to, going to bring, uh, I'm not going to let the excuses that I may have, my lack of confidence in, in your coming through. I'm not going to let those stop me. I'm going to be boldly confident in your power, and I'm going to be available to to be used by you in whatever way you see fit. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to see and hear what you're, you're saying to us and the things that, that need to, to change, the things that need to be turned around, the areas in our lives that, that need to go follow your intended purposes for us. God, help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.